Thank you for listening to Stories to Inspire. The following is one of the most incredible stories that we've heard from October 7th. The story is as follows. My name is Shuval Arizoni. I am a 21-year-old resident of the village of Bad Harun. Before joining the army, I completed a year and a half of preparatory school. After receiving my draft notice, I joined the Golani Brigade and underwent eight months of training. I was assigned to the 51st Battalion, where I participated in training both in the north and the south, including Hebron and the Gaza Strip. For the past two and a half months, my role on the front lines has been as a driver in a reinforced vehicle with the platoon commander. During this time, we regularly conducted patrols in various sectors and dealt with incidents at the border, including confrontations with terrorists who staged demonstrations and threw explosive devices. Every morning from 5.30 to 7.30 a.m., we embarked on patrols along the border. I would go on a routine patrol with a platoon commander. On October 7th, from 5.30 to 6.30 a.m., we sat in the vehicle, chatting and laughing as usual. At 6.30, we started hearing mortar shells and rockets coming from the direction of Gaza and a massive amount. Every meter and every second, another shell fell. The commander instructed everyone to put on their helmets, and we quickly proceeded to the shelter, which was just a few meters from the road. We disembarked, entered the shelter, and sought refuge. The four of us are in the shelter, continuing to talk and laugh, realizing everything is fine, despite more incoming mortar shells. Two civilians who worked in a nearby field join us, and we try to reassure them. After a short pause in the shelling, they decided to leave, get in their car, and drive away. We stay in the shelter for a couple of minutes until my commander receives a phone call, and we hear shouting from the phone. The platoon commander is yelling at him, come quickly, they're shooting at us. We have friends getting killed here. Immediately, the commander instructs us to get on the vehicle. We climb aboard and start driving towards the base. After about 200 meters, we reach the entrance of my base. Looking ahead, we witness a mortar falling on a tank just a few meters away. The tank explodes, prompting us to make a spontaneous decision to turn around. We drive away and reach the junction where we took refuge earlier in the morning. There, I, as a driver, look to the right and see 12 terrorists on motorcycles about 15 meters away. Looking to the left, I see 30 terrorists with motorcycles and trucks with no escape routes Amidst shouts, gunfire, and incoming mortars targeting our vehicle, my commander instructs me to turn left, bypass the terrorists, position the vehicle at a 90-degree angle, and quickly disembark to return fire. Following the orders, I turn left, facing the terrorists in front of me, while those behind us hear the gunfire. I position the vehicle at a 90-degree angle, and my commander commands, Drive to Ain Hashlosha. Ain Hashlosha is one of the closest communities nearby. As soon as I press the gas pedal towards Ain Hashlosha, I hear a loud explosion. Within seconds, an RPG is fired at the right side of our vehicle. We fly a few meters, all the windows shattering, smoke rising. After being shaken up for a few seconds, I look at my commander, noticing blood all over his face. At that moment, I realize I'm losing my hearing. I shout towards him but I hear nothing, just a ringing sound. I try to communicate that there is no gas or brakes, and the vehicle begins swerving on the road for about two to three kilometers. In a split second, I decide to veer off the road, driving through a field adjacent to Kisufim. We roll for about 50 to 60 meters until the vehicle stops. The commander exits the car. Everyone else follows, except me. I attempt to open the door and realize the terrorists are on my side. Still hear hearing nothing, unsure if they're shooting at the vehicle, I decide to open the door. I see the terrorists right on my side and remain unsure of what's happening. Everyone else exits. I try to open the door, realizing everything is chaotic. I decide to open the door and start running. As I run, the three others are behind the vehicle, then I run to the other side. I don't hear anything, shouting at them that I can't hear anything. After a few seconds, I reach the Kisufim Junction. At the entrance of Kisufim, I start receiving a barrage of gunfire from the junction itself. I understand that 20 terrorists on motorcycles are beginning to aim towards me. I jump over the road and lie down behind it, shielding myself. After a few moments, I realize that everything is already exploding around the terrorists. I no longer know where my three friends who were in the car are. I lie there for about 20 seconds, then decide to get up. I rise and return to the same spot, seeing our vehicle standing still and no one around. I realize I'm alone. I start crawling for about 20 seconds, half a minute, to the town of Kisufim, 
I reach a ditch between the town and the Kisufim outpost, lying there in the ditch right in front of Kisufim Cemetery. While lying there, I find a sufficiently large stone, lay it behind me, and lift my head to see what's happening. The first thing I see, upon raising my head from behind the stone, is a terrorist sitting on his knees with an RPG aimed at a group of soldiers. I pull my head out, thinking for a few seconds, and decide to shoot at him. I fire several rounds and he falls. In less than a second, I look to my left and see an approaching motorcycle with two terrorists on it. I follow them with my weapon, seeing them heading towards the Kisufim town. After a few seconds, I give them three shots in the head and they fall. The terrorist on the motorcycle falls with it and bends forward. As he bends forward, I shoot him multiple times in the abdomen, and he also falls. Within three or four seconds, I look to my left again. Another motorcycle with two terrorists is coming. I hesitate for a moment, debating whether to run and hide in one of the ditches or to shoot at them. I decide to shoot at them. I do the same, aiming at the head of the driver. He falls. After a few seconds, I give five shots to the terrorist behind him, and he falls too. Then I lie behind the stone, passing about half a minute. I hear more motorcycles approaching. Looking to my left from the wadi, I see three motorcycles, carrying, each carrying two armed terrorists, wearing Hamas headbands, with weapons including machine guns, grenades, and RPGs. I hesitate for a bit longer, contemplating whether to shoot at them or not. Realizing that if I shoot, I'm likely to die anyway, I decide to shoot at them. Overwhelmed by pressure, I fire at one of the terrorists. After shooting at one of the terrorists, I, I quickly realize that I'm not going to make it out alive, and I need to try to eliminate as many terrorists as possible before they find and kill me. I continue shooting, taking down the driver of the first motorcycle with a headshot. Then I turn my attention to the terrorist behind him, firing multiple rounds until he falls. With the adrenaline rushing, I quickly reload and turn towards the next motorcycle approaching. I manage to shoot the driver, causing the motorcycle to veer off the road. The second terrorist on that motorcycle falls, and the motorcycle crashes. I'm lying behind the stone, observing the chaos I've caused, when I hear more motorcycles approaching. This time, there are four motorcycles, each carrying two armed terrorists. The situation becomes overwhelming, and I realize the imminent danger. I decide to take cover and hide in one of the ditches. As I hide, I hear the sound of the approaching motorcycle, and the terrorists begin to pass by without noticing me. I lie there holding my breath, hoping they won't discover my presence. Fortunately, they continue on their way, and after a tense moment, I realize that I've managed to evade their attention. With a sense of relief, I wait until the coast is clear, and then cautiously emerge from the ditch. The situation is still chaotic. With the aftermath of the clashes and the fallen terrorists around me, I assess the situation and decide on my next move, knowing that the danger is far from over. As I reach the road, bullets whiz past me me, and explosions continue in every direction. The situation is dire, with hundreds of terrorists surrounding me. Despite the relentless gunfire and explosions, I manage to sprint towards the road, aiming to reach the entrance of Ain Hashlosha. The intensity of the firefight increases as I run along the road. Bullets are flying and the ground shakes from the continuous explosions. Tanks and armored vehicles join the fray, adding to the chaos. I realize that Gaza is beginning to shell Ein Hashlosha, and the situation is becoming increasingly perilous. With determination, I reach the road and start running along it towards the entrance of Ein Hashlosha. The constant barrage of bullets and explosions makes it challenging to stay on my feet. I glance at the fields around me, searching for any cover or refuge. As I run, I spot the entrance gate of Ein Hashlosha in the distance. My plan is to reach the gate or find shelter in one of the houses, hoping to alert the guards and warn the residents. I push myself to run faster knowing that my survival depends on reaching safety. The sound of gunfire and explosions echoes around me, and I can feel the heat of the ongoing battle. The road ahead seems endless, and with each step I wonder if I'll make it to the safety of Ein Hashlosha. The situation is dire, and my instincts drive me forward as I navigate through chaos, determined to reach the entrance and warn of the impending danger. As I approach the road, I hear voices speaking in Arabic, laughter and chatter. Motorcycles and tundras pass right above me, and I desperately try to avoid being noticed. After a large group of motorcycles passes, I remain on the ground for a few more minutes, hoping the danger has passed. However, I realize that I am surrounded from all directions, and random explosions continue to occur nearby. I decide to get up and move, and as I do, I see a lone motorcycle approaching from the right. 
In an attempt to defend myself, I fire 10 shots at the rider, causing them to fall off the motorcycle. As I approach the fallen assailant, I realize the gravity of, of our situation. Nowhere to escape and no clear course of action. Panicking, I start running to backwards towards Kisufim and find myself in a valley between the hills surrounded by terrorists on all sides. With only one ammunition clip left, I return to the center of the valley, finding a large bush to hide behind. As I locate a ditch large enough for cover, I start please placing leaves and grass on myself, blending into the surroundings. Amidst the ongoing explosions and gunfire, I desperately attempt to conceal my presence. After a couple of hours in this tense situation, I hear the sound of numerous motorcycles approaching me, and I remain motionless as they pass directly above me. Now I find myself alone again, with only one ammunition clip remaining hidden in the ditch. The situation is precarious, and I await the next development in this perilous journey. After taking cover in the ditch, I notice a group of motorcyclists parking their bikes about 20 to 30 meters to my right. They sit under a tree, chatting, laughing, and loading their weapons. I remain lying low, praying they don't spot me. After a while, they mount their bikes and leave the area. Relieved, I take out a paper and a pen from my pocket, jotting down a parting letter to my friends and family. About seven hours pass in that ditch, surrounded by sporadic gunfire and explosions. Eventually, the shooting to my left subsides. I decide to leave the ditch and run left, reaching a road I had traversed earlier in the morning. Spotting the terrorist I encountered earlier, I immediately raise my weapon, signaling him to stop. He complies, and I see a military jeep rushing towards me at 120 kilometers an hour. Thinking quickly, I just, with my weapon, throw it away and raise my hands. The jeep screeches to a halt just a meter away. Four officers, the same ones I met during the Saturday morning attack, step out. As I shout, IDF, 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 one official officer yells, Don't shoot, don't shoot, he's an IDF soldier. They swiftly approach, releasing me from the tense situation. I retrieve my weapon and join them in the jeep as we drive into the area of Kisufim, now filled with soldiers from various units, buses and civilians as well as military vehicles surround the area. Despite the ongoing gunfire, I observe the broken roads leading into the settlement. Tanks have already entered, and a full-scale battle is underway. The officer instructs me to listen carefully, hands me a weapon and a grenade, and informs me that the unit is entering the settlement to regain control. As we move through the village, it becomes evident that the situation is dire. Injured soldiers are exiting, and pockets of resistance by terrorists are scattered throughout. The IDF unit, joined by my comrades, begins to systematically clear houses, searching for injured civilians or hostages. Entering one house, we find it ablaze, another testament to the severity of the situation. Moving to the next, we discover an elderly woman in the garden with gunshot wounds. As we evacuate her, we come across houses with entire families erased, tables still set for the Shabbat meal, a chilling sight. After hours of intense urban warfare, we exit the village with a wounded civilian, greeted by the sight of helicopters hovering above and tanks rumbling through. We load the injured into an ambulance, and I join the unit as we return to the field. The battle continues into the night. Helicopters circle overhead, and tank shells illuminate the darkness. The IDF gradually gains control, pushing the terrorists out of the settlement. In the early morning hours, we regroup, taking stock of the situation. It is only then that I f allow myself to feel the exhaustion, the adrenaline wearing off. I am Shuval Arizoni, a 21-year-old soldier in the IDF, recounting the events of that fateful day. The scars of battle will forever remain etched in my memory. October 7th is a day that I will never forget for the rest of my life. Thank you, God, for saving me.